What do you call Crimea? I call it a part of Russian territory, bitch. That's what I call Crimea. I call it Crimea River, a Russian river. Russia's historic access into the Black Sea Crimea that's like historically fucking ethnically all Russian that is totally fine with the annexation according to Western fucking sources that conducted uh, conducted polls after the original referendum. Do you think Hassan wakes up this wrong? Or just throughout the day, he becomes more and more incorrect. Welcome to the video, everyone. I'm Bobby, and today we're going to be looking at the Crimean situation specifically, but just more in general, territorial claims and the idea of the right to self-determination, which in my mind is a good idea, but it's a bit more intensive than just what did one survey say after one very controversial annexation? So we're going to talk about the Russian situation specifically, and then we're going to kind of compare it to other cases where these kind of claims would come into play. But first, we just need to get some foundational ideas out of the way. The first thing we're going to talk about is the idea of uh, territorial claims specifically in this case historic territorial claims there are some territorial claims that are justified that have that are very clear okay but the idea of historic territorial claims is that nobody has necessarily wronged your state nobody has necessarily wronged your country you're relying on an idea of history of a patriotic narrative to justify your right to own some land that you maybe currently don't. The next idea is the idea of state succession. Okay, when a country goes away, when a country dies or collapses, it is replaced by another country or series of countries that take on the identity of the previous one. And so in this case, the Russian Federation is taking on the history of the Soviet Union and the Russian Empire. The last and perhaps the strongest uh, type of claim is the right to self-determination. The right to self-determination outlines the way that people should be able to choose how they're governed and who governs them. Let's look at the first claim. Russia's historic access into the Black Sea crime. So I know that I just clip chimped Hassan a bit out of context mid rant. But what he said was, Russia's historic access to the Black Sea. I have some problems with this claim, because the Russian Federation has never owned Crimea. So they are relying on what we talked about before, the successor state sort of status of the Russian Federation. So how does Ukraine have de jure sovereignty over the Crimean Peninsula if it is historically Russian, and if it's historically Russia's access to the Black Sea? Especially considering that Russia hasn't had any problems getting into the Black Sea with its fleet. 1783, the Russians annexed the territory from the Crimean Khanate, which is a successor state to the Mongol Empire, who conquered it all the way back in 1238. So the Mongols have a claim that stretches for about 545 years, compared to the Russian claim of 171 years. Now, in 1954, the Russian Republic of the Soviet Union gifts Crimea to the Ukrainian People's Republic. They give it to them. They cede their rights to that territory to the Ukrainian Republic. Doubling down on this, in 1994, Russia signs the Budapest Memorandum on Security Assurances to guarantee the borders of the former Soviet states like Ukraine. And then in 2004, Russia signs another treaty with Ukraine, acknowledging the territory of Crimea belonging to the Ukraine and agreeing on access to the Black Sea. Which kind of starts to beg the question, how many times does Russia have to say that the territory doesn't belong to them before any territorial claims are extinguished? And on to the next point. Crimea, that's like historically fucking ethnically all Russian that is totally fine with the annexation according to Western fucking sources that conducted uh, conducted polls after the original referendum. Whoa, Bobby. I know. I know that the territory thing might not be, might not pan out for Russia, 
But um, what about people's right to self-determine? Like, why don't they get to choose which country they belong to? Well, they already did. In 2013, before the annexation. So in 2013, the International Republican Institute, as well as the Gallup Organization and the Rating Group of Ukraine, did a survey called the Public Opinion Survey, Residents of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea. In it, there's a lot of information, but two key points is that as of May 2013, only 40% of Crimeans consider themselves to be Russian. Nowhere near the sweeping majority it's made out to be after the annexation. A question they later ask in the survey is, should the status of Crimea within the Ukraine stay the way it is, become fully absorbed by Ukraine, or to be ceded to Russia. 53% of people polled said that they would like to stay as an autonomous region inside of the Ukraine. This is part of a general trend moving into the Ukraine's favor. And for the eagle-eyed viewers among you, you may have noticed that only 23% of the residents of the Crimean Peninsula wanted Russia to have control of the Crimean Peninsula. Now, if you're any good at maths, you may know that that is a massive swing around. In less than a year, the number of people that think that Russia should own Crimea goes from 23% to more than 90%. Ooh, la la. Day two, fresh cut. Now, I know that yesterday's Bobby uh, conflated the idea of nationality and ethnicity, but the point that I wanted to make there is that people were identifying as Ukrainian despite their Russian ethnicity. And it is true that 60% of the population was ethnically Russian. But there is a big reason for that, and that big reason is genocide. So in the 1940s, the Crimean Tatar population was genocided. They were put into conditions where they would die. And Russians were encouraged to move into the region. And this is where the trend of the overwhelming Russian population comes from, from historic genocide. But despite that, I do think the nation you identify with is more important than your ethnicity in this scenario, because it's who you're choosing to identify with, not what you're born to identify with. Two similar situations that are perhaps a little bit less controversial um, but both deal with territorial ownership and both happen to link to uh, the United Kingdom, uh, Gibraltar and Northern Ireland. Now, Gibraltar and Northern Ireland have both been owned for longer than 400 years by the United Kingdom. And in both regions, they have voted to stay as part of the United Kingdom. But it's still controversial. People want to see a reunified Ireland. People want to see Gibraltar return to Spain. But according to Hassan's logic of the fact that the these are historically territories owned by the United Kingdom, the populations both vote to be part of the United Kingdom. So therefore, there's no nuance. There's nowhere to go. Their case is bulletproof. And so the last thing I kind of want to point out is the kind of obscene scenarios that this could lead to. And the first one I want to talk about, we're going to call Britain for the Britons. The idea that invaders and colonizers and conquerors and occupiers should be removed from the land because uh, there's a historical territorial claim would justify Wales and Cornwall killing all of the English, the Anglo-Saxons, right? The Germans who came over and settled and pushed the Britons, the native inhabitants of the United Kingdom, well, of the, of the area where the United Kingdom is, pushing them all the way out to the west into Wales and all the way out to the west into Cornwall. And so in our imaginary scenario, uh, France, Germany and Russia all team up and over a series of, let's say, eight years, 
they drum up Welsh nationalism and Cornish nationalism, and they fund separatist groups in the region. Right? And then those separatist groups are then encouraged to take England by force, which is fine because it's a historical, it's their historic access to the English Channel. It's their historic access to the North Sea. I don't see what the problem is, right? Those people that live there now, they're German, they're occupiers. Where's the statute of limitations that says that this wouldn't be reasonable? The last obscene scenario I want to talk about is the idea of all of the Russian Americans moving to Alaska, identifying as Russian, and then voting to return to Russia, to federal Russia, right? Which is perfectly fine, right? So the number of Russian Americans is 2.9 million. They all move to Alaska. They far outweigh anybody there. So we have a referendum that calls for Alaska, which was historically owned by the Russians. It's historically their access into North America. It's historically um, full of oil fields and resources. And now that the Russian population in Alaska would like to return to the Russian Federation, right? Um, why not? Why not? According to Hassan's logic, just like Crimea, Alaska should be returned because it doesn't matter what the history of the area is and what happened before those events, right? It only matters what happened during the event and what one survey says afterwards. So I guess it's justified. So do I think that Hassan is a genocide denying uh, Russian agent that is running interference for Putin so that he can justify his claim on Crimea? No. I think that Hassan made an outrageous claim about something that he doesn't understand and there's a lot more depth to it than maybe he appreciated. But this is why he shouldn't be making outrageous claims. Anyway, that's kind of my take on the Crimean situation. History is far more complex than just being able to make a simple call. Has everything I've said in this video been able to be applied to every situation no but that's because that's the point we can't take one event or one idea and apply it to everything that happens throughout history and throughout the world because that's not how things work so it needs to be couched within its context to make any sense at all and this has just really given me the motivation because that claim that was made was just so entirely outrageous um, was so entirely outrageous that it's it's bordering on harmful but yeah if you guys like the video please um subscribe like uh this is something that i'd like to do some more of going forward I'd like to see where it goes and how it grows um and just do some history related videos and maybe reaction videos like this so if you did enjoy it uh, as i said do all the youtube things maybe if i can be bothered there'll be a patreon link um, and hopefully I won't have to film all this on a cell phone with a uh, janky headset. So thanks and I guess I'll see you all in the next video.